Okay, we're going to take a look at structure and function of life. So there's quite a bit within this, so let's get started. Okay, so we start with the nucleus and the cell membrane. So the cell nucleus is a membrane-bound structure that contains the cell's hereditary information and controls the cell's growth and reproduction. It is the command center of the eukaryotic cell and is commonly the most prominent organelle in a cell. So if any of those terms like a eukaryote or organelles confuse you, we're going to get to those uh, in a second. Uh, the nucleus is the organelle which houses chromosomes. Chromosomes consist of DNA, which contains hereditary information and instructions for cell growth, development, and reproduction. The cell membrane is a biological membrane that separates the interior of all cells from the outside environment. It consists of a lipid bilayer with embedded proteins. The basic function of the cell membrane is to protect the cell from its surroundings. The cell membrane controls the movement of substances in and out of cells and organelles. Okay, so the main thing with the nucleus, if we only have one thing, is uh, that it contains uh, the cell's hereditary information and with the cell membrane that it protects the cell from its surroundings. If we know that, we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so now we get to the eukaryotes and prokaryotes. A eukaryote is any organism whose cells have a cell nucleus and other organelles enclosed within membranes. So that's really the important part. Eukaryote means nucleus. The defining feature that sets eukaryotic cells apart from prokaryotic cells, like an example of a prokaryotic cell would be bacteria, is that they have membrane-bound organelles, especially the nucleus, which contains the genetic material enclo enclosed by the nuclear-bound organelles, such as mitochondria and the Golgi apparatus. In addition, plants and algae contain chloroplasts. Unlike unicellular unicell archaea and bacteria, eukaryotes may also be multicellular and include organisms consisting of many kinds of tissue and cell types. All right, so prokaryotes are unicellular organisms that lack organelles or other internal membrane-bound structures. Therefore, they do not have a nucleus, but instead generally have a single chromosome. That's a piece of circular, double-stranded DNA located in an area of the cell called the nucleo nucleoid. Bacteria is a prokaryote. Okay, so at a minimum, the key point that you must take away is that eukaryotes have a nucleus and prokaryotes do not. Okay, so we have levels of organization here. Multicellular organisms are made of many parts that are needed for survival. These, are, these parts are divided into levels of organization. There are eight levels, and so we're going to go, go through each of them. These eight levels starting from the smallest to going to the largest are atoms, molecules, organelles, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and organisms. Okay, so let's look at each of these real quickly. So we start with the atom. Atom is the smallest part of an element and is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. A molecule is two or more atoms that are bonded together. An organelle is a small part inside a cell that has a specific job to do, such as a vacuole. The nucleus, the mitochondrion, the chloroplast, the Golgi apparatus, the lysosome, and the endoplasmic reticulum are all examples of organelles. The cell, the basic unit of structure and function in a living thing is the cell. Tissues are many cells of the same type working together to perform a function. An organ is different tissues working together to form a structure with a specific function. So an example could be the heart. That's an organ. Organ system is different than just an organ. Uh, organ system is different organs working together to perform a major process in an organism. So a good example would be the digestive system. That's an organ system, or an organ would be the heart. Uh, an organism is a single living thing 
that has all the characteristics of life, such as a human or an animal. Okay, so that's the eight levels of organization. So we just need to be, you know, again, don't need to know a lot of specifics uh, with any of these, but we need to generally know what each of these do. Okay, now we're gonna look at cell theory. In biology, cell theory, cell theory is the historic scientific theory now universally accepted that living organisms are made up of cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure in all organisms and also the basic unit of reproduction. With continual improvements made to microscopes over time, magnification technology advanced enough to discover cells in the 17th century. This discovery is largely attributed to Robert Hooke and began the scientific study of cells, also known as cell biology. Over a century later, many debates about cells began amongst scientists. Most of these debates involved the nature of cellular regeneration and the idea of cells as a fundamental unit of life. Cell theory was eventually formulated in 1839. Okay, so that was just to give you a little bit of background. You do not have to know 1839, I would be shocked if you had to know Robert Hooke, but we do need to know that there are three basic tenets to cell theory. First, all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. Second, the cell is the basic unit of structure and organization in organisms. And third, cells arise from pre-existing cells. Those are the three things we really need to know. Okay, so we also need to be familiar with mitochondria. It's an important one. Mitochondria are rod-shaped organelles that can be considered the power generators of the cell, converting oxygen and nutrients into something called adenosine triphosphate, and, that's the, and the uh, abbreviation there, you'll hear it called ATP. ATP is the chemical en energy currency of the cell that powers the cell's metabolic activities. This process is called aerobic respiration and is the reason animals breathe oxygen. Without mitochondria, higher animals would likely not exist because their cells would only be able to obtain energy from anaerobic respiration, a process that's much less efficient than aerobic respiration. In fact, mitochondria enable cells to produce 15 times more ATP than they could otherwise, and complex animals like humans need large amounts of energy in order to survive. So. The key thing you'll hear that refer to sometimes even in a question that mitochondria is a power generator of the cell um, and the big one is that it converts oxygen into ATP. So you need to be just basically familiar with red and white blood cells. What's the difference between them? Red blood cells are the most common type of blood cell and the vertebrae's principal means of delivering oxygen to the body tissues via blood flow, blood flow through the circulatory system. Red blood cells take up oxygen in the lungs and release it into tissues while squeezing through the body's capillaries. All right, so there the real important part is that red blood cells deliver oxygen to the tissues via blood flow. White blood cells are the cells of the immune system that are involved in protecting the body against both infectious disease and foreign invaders. All white blood cells are produced and derived from multipotent cells in the bone marrow known as stem cells. Okay, so our big points here are red blood cells deliver oxygen, white blood cells help to fight off disease. So you need to understand that basic difference. We should be good to go with red and white blood cells. And finally, we have photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy that can later be released to fuel the organism's activities. This chemical energy is stored in carbohydrate molecules, such as sugars, which are synthesized from carbon dioxide and water. In most cases, oxygen is also released as a waste product. Most plants and algae produce perform photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is largely responsible for producing and maintaining the oxygen content of the Earth's atmosphere 
and supplies all of the organic compounds and most of the energy necessary for life on Earth. Although photosynthesis is performed differently by different species, the process always begins when energy from light is absorbed by proteins called reaction centers that contain green chlorophyll pigments. Okay, so with photosynthesis, if you can only know one thing, it converts light into chemical energy. That'll help you uh, at least with one question. Um, also want to know that photosynthesis produces and maintains much of the Earth's oxygen content and provides most of the energy necessary for life on Earth. Okay, so there we go. That's structure and function of life.